Just about a decade ago, my next guest created a program that not only ushered TNT into the world of scripted television, it was one of the first hits in the world of the modern scripted television era. We're talking about The Closer. Kira Cedric starred. She won later an Emmy Award, one of the first for a cable program, and the show became a classic of its kind. Then came a program called Major Crimes, a spinoff, and Monday night it began its fourth season on TNT. Joining us now for a real live interview from Los Angeles, the creator and executive producer of Major Crimes, James Duff. James, it's a pleasure to finally have you on the program. And there we go. He is now on. James, welcome in. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for asking me to join you. It is a pleasure, James. Uh, can you believe 10 years have passed uh, or more since the closer came on the air? Only when I look in the mirror. Um, for me, it it happened so fast. And, you know, we've done now over 150 episodes of television with many of the same characters. And it's it's just been a miracle. I've, I've never had – I never in my life have had a job that went on this long. I I was – I think I've been – I was fired for most of the jobs I had in the real world. And uh, and I only I only took up television because I didn't want to work for a living. And boy, it's – boy, was I misinformed. It's It's been – it's it's an all-consuming job, but it's a wonderful job. It's a miracle job, and I love the people I work with, and I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people on earth. What's it like to grow a decade with these characters you've created in this unit of Los Angeles that deals on a day-to-day basis with crime, and a very diverse unit it is, too? Yes, uh, diversity was one of the things that we really looked for in putting the show together, not because we were trying to be politically correct, but because – we want to be authentic. Uh, Los Angeles is a very diverse city, and we wanted to have that diversity reflected on screen. And and uh, it's interesting, you know, this is the first show, Michael Paul Chan, who's had a, a very, very long career, and this is the first show that Michael has ever been able just to use his regular voice, where he wasn't asked to put on some uh, phony Chinese American accent. And and uh, we are playing the strengths of diversity and showing that, you know, a lot of the, the cliches we have with different minority groups that we portray on television are just not true. So that's been a, a great side benefit. Um, as, as for, as for uh, spending so much of my career with the same people, including my producing partner, Michael Robin, who is – a great director and a genius and a terrific friend. Uh, you know, you you take for granted that some affection will wear away during a, a long, long process like that. Um, or as Oscar Wilde once put it, uh, uh, women only call each other sisters after calling each other a lot of other things first. Uh, and that didn't happen with us. We really did stick to friendship all the way through and it continues even to last night Kieran Giovanni who plays Detective Amy Sykes sang the Star Spangled Banner at the Dodger Stadium and every cast member who was off went to hear her and that's how tight the company is and I'm very proud that we've stayed that way we're we're really more like family than than just co-workers and that goes for the crew as well James, we have a call already. We're going to take it. Hello, you're on tomorrow. We televised. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling. Uh, this is Jonathan Cohn. I'm calling from White Plains, New York. Jonathan, great to have you in the program. You're on the line with James Duff of Major Crimes. Go ahead. Uh, James, uh, I. Um, you're, you and most of your crew are fair, and cast and staff are fairly active on social media. From where do you think you get a uh, more understanding, coherent, and comprehensive feedback from from your general fan base or from the uh, people that you deal with uh, uh, higher up the food chain? Oh, no. I, I, Jonathan, that's a really good question. Uh, I get much, much more uh, authentic feedback from social media and from the audience on Facebook and from the dedicated viewer than I get from anywhere else. And we believe 
in the audience as a character on the show. We try to include the audience, and we try to make sure that the audience our, – our respect for the audience is is uh, profound. Now, that's not to say that um, our creative partners at TNT and at Warner Brothers are not influential in what we do, but – our first priority is the audience, and I feel like, you know, it's a good thing because audiences are shrinking overall on television, and last year we grew. Uh, our emphasis on the audience, I, I feel, is, has paid off and and that they – they respond, and I think if you respect people, they respond with respect. And I think that that same transactional uh, respect can work with a television show and the viewers. And I, I hope you agree with me on that. Oh, I I do. I mean, I've been a fan of yours since the very very first uh, episode of uh, The Closer, and uh, I dragged my fiance into it, and uh, she was a little bit surprised that who she found out she was uh, patterned after in some way or another. But uh, but I think you're right. I think, and, I, and the people that I interact with, either either on social media or in real life, uh, you really do get that feeling that you and your uh, and your, your entire crew, you know, don't uh, go out of your way not to insult your your the viewers, that you actually make one of the more intelligent shows. Sometimes we have to wait for your creative genius to, you know, uh, go through an arc for us to get to the, you know, you know, to for us to be able to connect the dots, which, you know, you see a lot of people trying to, to connect them for you. And then when you, when you finally do with your magic, it's like, oh, yeah, we hadn't thought of that. That makes sense. And that's part of the genre writing that we take very seriously, mystery writing, which is um, putting together the clues for people to draw conclusions and, and, you know, you if you look at a connect the dots, sometimes you think it's one thing, but when you get the dots all connected, it's actually another. And right. sometimes it's like a broken mosaic, and we try to to put that all the pieces of the mosaic out there, and then the audience puzzles them together. And and uh, you know, I I do feel the uh, emotional connection to the audience that that the social media allows us to have in this day and age, our, our new age of television. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, and again, I, I'll let another call to me. I, I do want to thank you for your time today and, and thank you and the rest of your uh, cast uh, staff and crew for all the uh, dedicated work that they've, they've done for you and for, and for us, the viewers. And thank you for taking the time to call in today. I deeply appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you. Take care. Jonathan, thank you for the call. We really appreciate it. Take care. Have a great weekend. Jonathan Cohen joining us live here on Tomorrow from White Plains, New York. If you have a question or comment for James, do what Jonathan just did. Give us a ring, 646-652-2906. That number has been anywhere you're catching us across the country, around the world here on Tomorrow Retail Live. You can also use that chat room. Simon Apple 04 by name. A lot of people in the room. So if you're trying to get the phone, get into that room, get those books down because what you say does matter. And coming up in our next half hour, we're going to go live to Millersburg, Ohio. And that's where we're going to find Shavala Chauncey. She's the co-executive producer of Up's latest original movie. It's called Love Finds You in Charm. Charm meaning, it's an actual city, Charm, Ohio, Amish country. And it's the setting uh, for a spinoff of a movie that ran last year at this time, which turned out to be Up's most popular original movie ever. That's coming up our next half hour after the top of the hour here on Tomorrow Be Televised. James, four years ago, you made two calls. One was... We're going to call it a day with a closer. Kira wants to end it. We should end it in a great way. But you all decided we're going to keep going with major crimes. Was it a hard or easy decision to uh, to keep the show going? Well, it was. I would say it was both. I mean, I didn't know how we were going to go forward exactly, but I knew Michael Wright wanted us to go forward, and Steve Coonan wanted us to go forward, and they were the powers um, in charge of Turner at that and uh, Michael was very hands-on in his process, and he said, I won't make you do a pilot. You'll go straight to series. We'll change the name uh, out of respect for Kira, and we will uh, move forward with the characters that we have and transition Mary from the 
villain to the lead. And that was a that was a great challenge. Uh and we we accepted that challenge because we liked working together so much. And it was such like I said, it's a it it it, it is a devoted company. And we had Kira's blessing with all of that. And I'm still very close to her. As a matter of fact, it's so funny. She flew from New York here to Los Angeles, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for seven years during the closer. And right after she finished doing the show, she bought a house like five blocks from where I live. So it it's 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 kind of funny, really. She's still very tight with most of the cast too. I mean, we we stayed together because uh, unfortunately, uh, since we're a police procedural. Um, Murder has not stopped happening, so we still have plenty to do in terms of uh, hunting down killers because we really enjoyed each other. And, and I might point out, like you know, my relationships with some of these people predate the show. Like G. W. Bailey, who plays Provenza, I've known him since I was 15. He was one of my acting teachers at a theater workshop I attended when I was in high school uh, several years in a row and was a big influence on me moving into show business to begin with. My parents wanted me to work for Sears or be a lawyer. I think my father really wanted me to be the governor of Texas, which is just not something I could see myself doing. And uh, GW was a, a big force for pushing me in into work in television in the in the first place. And I have several relationships like that in the cast. One of the other uh, people you have in your cast, kind of from the start, is, is someone who I admired very much back in the 80s for a performance as the gangster Ray Luke on Crime Story, Anthony Denison, now Tony Denison. Uh, I thought that yes, performance was one of the scariest, most wonderful, uh, full-out, get-out performances of that era. Uh, and the Crime Story, I think, had lasted a lot longer, and people had come to uh, not only catch him, but the late Dennis Farina, an actual Chicago cop who was uh, starring that show, that, uh, that Tony might have gotten an Emmy nomination for the role. But uh, I've always I've really enjoyed him on the closer. It's a very different side of him, of course, uh, but uh, but still a lot of fun. And Tony still has access to all that menace, and he's just an amazing actor. Uh, he is so natural for uh, the camera. First off, the camera loves him, and secondly, he knows exactly how to do what he's doing. I mean, this guy is a thoroughgoing professional, and he loves his job. And he loves GW. They have some great scenes together. And Crime Story was an amazing series. It comes up a lot when we do panels because people remember that show very fondly. And people should check it out if they. If that's one show, if you if you're streaming something on Netflix or Amazon Prime, I would look for Crime Story. It's it's worth it. It's worth the investment. It's so atmospheric, James, so well done, including the Del Shannon remake of Runaway with the wonderful lyrics um, that he put for that show. And, they, and they're very haunting, uh, which, which really, I, was, uh, I, I really thought that Tony and Dennis and everybody worked so well. The writing on that show was terrific. And some wonderful directors like Abel Ferrara, who many members one of the great independent film directors still out there, uh, did some of his only television work on Crime Story. And, and you can see the atmospheric and all the touches and... Um, and, and just everything from set to look to uh, to, photog- to cinematography, just how it all uh, worked very well. And that's one of the wonderful things about the way television is working today is that these old series are more instantly accessible than they used to be. And you can look up some really fine work that was done in the 80s and 90s and even in, in the 70s. And... I, I think some of it stands up. Of course, we're we're sort of in a golden era of scripted programming in many ways, and there are things that you can do on television now that nobody ever thought you could do, and and yet some of these old shows are are terrific ancestors, and Crime Story is definitely one of them. I would say MASH is one of them too, GW's old show. And I would say Battlestar Galactica is one which was um Mary McDonald show. She she was she made a um I think a, an internal internal impression as a 
uh, President Rosalyn on Battlestar. And Raymond Cruz, uh, you know, you you can <laughs> you can look at uh, just his few performances on Breaking Bad. I think he only did two episodes, um, and he's just amazing in that. And all of our cast, you know, Graham Graham Patrick Martin started out his career playing um, the little brother to oh, what's her name? Who stars in uh, the Hunger Games, and then she won an Oscar Jennifer for Lawrence? Silver Linings Playbook. I'm sorry? Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence, yes, Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know why I suddenly blanked on her name. Um, you know, uh, it, it, we we have a, a, a talented cast with a very deep bench, and on the closer, we, we even had J.K. Simmons, who won an Oscar last year for... Um, uh, the movie with the drums. <laughs> I can't remember. My mind is, my mind is not going back in time as well as it should. Um, J.K. is an amazing actor, back... James. And by the way, he's oh, the series of stars uh, with one of the people from the Invitation Game. Uh, the director of the yes, Invitation Game. Uh, we had a news on that last week. He he is an amazing actor, and he's an amazing human being too. Tiffany Washington, uh, Tiffany Warrington, excuse me, is in our chat room. She has a question for you, James. It says, many of the fans of Major Crimes fell in love with Darth Radar on The Closer. We miss her sarcasm and snark. Uh, are we going to see more of her this season or more of that this season? I I think she she might be moving back a little bit to a tougher stance now that her adopted son is getting a little older and taking a little bit more responsibility for his life, taking on a little more autonomy. Um, a little bit of that is is uh, maybe creeping back up. But she had a job to be snarky before. Her job was to put police officers on their guard and to to make them mad so they would talk. And that's not her job anymore. Uh, her, she has a she has a different job, and it requires a different skill set. And she's she's uh, actually famous for her adherence to the rules and her demand that all the T's be crossed and all the I's be dotted. Normally, you know, you have a at the center of a police procedural, you have the detective who famously plays by his own rules and breaks the law and bends the law. And she does just the opposite. And we did that for a reason, and it and it works very well. She's sometimes a little maddening, but she is good hearted. And uh, you know, the snark the snark does come back in a couple of places. Uh you will see a little a little bit of snark this year. And Tiffany Weathers, thank you very much for being in our chat room for the question. Everyone Dave is also in our chat room. By the way, if you want to uh, get a question or comment in for James, James Duck, we're talking about the creator executive producer of Major Crimes, premieres its fourth season on TNT, Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific Time. He's our guest this half hour on Smart We Tell Life on Apple Down, and we'll be live from New York. Get it in at 646 uh, 652 Don't anywhere. Catch us across the country around the globe here on Blog Talk Radio, or use that chat room as Tiffany is, had, been, had done. I think I got that right. Uh, and that's Simon Apple 04. Uh, by name. And Evelyn David is in our room. She is very excited about Monday night's episode. Wanted to wish you and the cast great success this season. She uh, observed, observed that the show is a great deal of murder mystery, comedy, and maybe some romance this season. I understand that you're broadening things out beyond murder. I understand there's a home burglary episode, a couple of other unusual crimes. Uh, any spoilers that you want to spill? Well, yes. And, and, and I would say uh, our, our show is, is is uh, very careful not to have the same tone two weeks in a row. I mean, we sometimes the shows are very serious, and some sometimes the shows are lighter, and sometimes the shows are comic in nature. And that's part of the idea. You don't know what what kind of murder we're going to be solving, and you don't know what tone we're going to tell the story in, and you don't know whether it's a whodunit or how do we catch them or are they going to be breaking POV in this this hour. We we try to change it up because we feel like the the uh, unrelenting darkness of murder would be very hard to deal with on a on a regular basis. Spoilers. Uh, yes, I have a I have one big spoiler. Rusty Beck uh, in college. 
uh, gets shut out of his school paper. And he starts a vlog. And this vlog will run in tandem with our show. It's a three-hour vlog. I mean, it's a it's it's a three, four, five-minute digital uh, platform release uh, that that complements the show. You can watch the blog without watching the show. You can watch the blog with the show. The blog and the show interact. It's it's a uh, it's an interesting uh, new world <laughs> in which the hour drama exists, and so we're trying to exploit all the different areas where people can gather to watch the show. And digital platforms are becoming more and more important, as I'm sure you've had people say and 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 discuss on your show. Exactly. And then I, I, I could also say. I could I could also say, uh, you know, the Flynn and Provenza lighter episode this year concerns Buzz Watson's the the civilian tech. His, he he joins the L.A. Reserve officers, and his first ride along is with Flynn and Provenza, and he's trying to do things the way he's been taught to do in the 21st century, and they're still doing a lot of things that they learned to do in the 20th century, and it's a it's kind of fun. It's a very fun episode, and it and includes a, one of the most expensive weddings Los Angeles has ever had, maybe going completely sideways because of the LAPD. That will definitely be something to see. And incidentally, uh, there's some interesting new cast folks will be coming up now and then on, on your fourth season. One of them uh, is the Mop and Jamal Water from the Co- we all remember the Cosby Show and a lot of other things. Bill Brochip, who was so wonderful on NYPD Blue, uh, is also in there. And John Barron and Tom Berenger. He is also involved as uh, Jack Raider, Captain Rios, and Strange Hushman. Yeah, we have an amazing uh, cast of recurring characters. Malcolm Jamal Warner is in our in our premiere and does an amazing job, and he always does an amazing job in, in uh, playing Lieutenant Cooper, who has a relationship with uh, Detective Amy Sykes. And, and then uh, Bill Brocktrop, uh, he's he's – runs a theater company here in Los Angeles and in addition to all his film work has done some extraordinary stage work and uh, plays Rusty's therapist and plays a therapist at a special operations bureau inside the LAPD where he handles the pathology of criminal criminal pathology and especially as it pertains to children and adolescents. And and we use all of these. Kata Mauser, Kata is, plays uh, DDA Hobbs, uh, a district attorney, and she's in lots and lots of episodes. And Ransford Doherty plays the coroner investigator, who's in a, a lot of episodes. And all of these people just they help make our world look and feel bigger and more authentic, and they allow us more places to go for story. First thing, one more call. Here it is. Hello, you're on from Robbie Televised. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Heather. I'm calling from Virginia. Heather, great to have you. You're on the line with James Duff of Major Crimes. Go right ahead. Hey. So Hi, Heather. I just, Hi. I um, don't have a question. I have more of a comment. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to you and your cast and your company for making the closer and major crimes. Um, I am... 28, and I remember when the poster first came out, I was, like, really obsessed with it and kind of lost track of it. Back in November, I was in a car accident, and the poster in Major Crimes actually got me through my recovery, binge watching it all hours of the day and night and remembering the series, and it's just been a great joy to me. And so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys for making this thing happen. Oh, well, thank you so much for calling in with that. Hearing stories like that, uh, honestly, it really does make us feel like what we're doing is 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 worthwhile. We we live for these kind of reactions, and we want this kind of bond with the audience. And hearing that that uh, hearing that we distracted you from from uh, some of the more difficult moments that life throws at us is that's that's all we ever hope to do. And to know that we accomplished that uh, is really marvelous. Whenever we hear stories like that, and we we do hear stories like that, and especially from people who are, you know, facing trouble and stuff like that, who stumble up, stumble back upon us or discover us that way. It's been awesome, and I'm 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 so excited about Monday night. 
that. Good luck with the rest of this. All right. Well, thank you. Spread the word. Spread the word. Sure. We, we have a light. We have a much lighter marketing campaign this year. Yeah, I saw that. It's unfortunate. Yeah. But you've got you've got a lot of there. It's I kind of stay away from internet fandoms because they're they're kind of great on one end, but they're not great on the other end. But a lot of people are excited and are talking about it. I don't know. Just excited and thankful that you guys are still doing your thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Heather. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much, Heather Virginia. Take care. All the very best. And that's Heather from Virginia giving us a call right here on Tomorrow Be Televised. When you started a decade ago with these characters, and with Kira, and with The Closer, you were one of the few people doing scripted television on anywhere but broadcast network. TNT, you ushered TNT really into their era of scripted TV. And here we are a decade later, and we are in this incredible scripted TV movement where every network either is doing scripted or wants to be scripted. Uh, you got Netflix, you got Hulu, you got Amazon, you may have been torn, you had all, all these other places to go. Um, how does it impact how you do major crimes, and what do you think about this movement that, in a way, you uh, you help generate? It's interesting. I, t- to be honest with you, I think the scripted movement in basic cable, and I think basic cable and and all cable actually, is stands in relation to the business where the DVD business was like in 2006, 2007. And, and while it's impossible to imagine that it's going to go away, I feel like it is going to go away. I feel like the what the Internet did to the music business and to the newspaper business and to the book publishing business, it's about to do to cable. And... And so I, I don't know what the future is like. I don't. I, I although we never know what the future is like. There was some stability in uh, the way cable was running for a while, but it's been threatened by Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, the three streaming services that you mentioned. And now all these channels are are popping up with what they call over the top streaming services like CBS and. They just announced Showtime. HBO has been announced, and there's going to be more and more of that. And as the bundle comes undone, it's unclear to me what what will happen exactly. Um, the bundle provides enormous amounts of income for development and creation of product. And as it comes undone, I'm I'm not sure where all the money for development will will appear from. Um, it could be that shows like Major Crimes could help TNT transition to a streaming world. You know, maybe uh, our fans will be what they call sticky enough to follow uh, TNT off cable or uh, plus cable. Uh, but the world is changing, and I I don't know how much. I don't know how much life cable has in it at this moment, frankly. It contracted, you know, in the last quarter. In in um, the first time, I think, in 20 years, in the first quarter of this year, cable audiences, households, it decreased by half a percent. Let's say conservatively, that's like by 4 million homes. And at the same time, America, American households grew by 8 million households. So that's that's inverse inverse growth it's not what you're looking for and uh anecdotally i hear people say to me all the time you know i'm cutting the cord i'm cutting the cord i'm cutting the cord it's uh and and young people it's very hard to find young people who believe signing up for cable is a good use of their money so i don't know i i feel like we're dealing with uh the old Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. And and as you can see for yourself, if you examine the ratings, uh, television, uh, we did grow last year. I mean, we, we had growth, and that's, that, but that was unusual. And it's hard to believe we're going to do that again. I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what numbers make a television hit in the next two years on cable. 
And I'll tell you, James, as, as we uh, wrap the conversation, two things that's fascinating to me that Netflix and Hulu and Amazon are doing what they're doing because of the television set, because of smart TVs, because of devices like Roku and, and Amazon Fire and Google Chromecast, which are all very TV-centric. And, and secondly, the TNT uh, is, uh, is making some major moves in terms of scripted television, as well as the station CBS, and we'll see how it uh, with all goes down. Major Crimes yeah. is season four. I'm sorry, go ahead, James. No, I was just going to say thank you very much for for having me on and for for being so um, uh, knowledgeable about what it is we're trying to do. I really do appreciate it. You are very, very welcome, James. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you on. I just want to let folks know that they can see, of course, the fourth season opener of Major Crimes this Monday night, 9 10 Eastern Pacific Time on TNT. Check the locals for where that network is available in the area on cable and satellite. For more details about the program and the network, Online, you go to www.tntdrama.com. It's tntdrama.com. James, we've wanted to have you on this show for a long time. The last half hour plus has been well worth it. It is a pleasure to have you on, uh, and we would love to have you back. And I'd love to have Michael on with you as well. Uh, it is just a tremendous treat. All of the very best with you, Michael, your cast, your crew, uh, not just the fourth season coming up Monday night of Major Crimes, but hopefully many, many more seasons to come. It has been a terrific treat. From your mouth to God's ears, thank you very much for having us, and and we can't wait to come back. Call us anytime. You got it. You take care. You too. Bye bye. James Duff, the creator and executive producer of The Closer and Major Crimes, joining us live in an interview exclusive from Los Angeles. And by the way, to everybody who's in the chat room, we got your questions. Thank you for the phone calls and for the uh, the chat room questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to everybody. We're going to try to, uh, because I believe Major Crimes will have a second group of episodes coming up in late this year or early 2016. We're going to try to get James and maybe Michael Robin on the show before the end of the year. This has been absolutely fantastic. And I thank all of you for being in the chat room and on the phone for making it happen. Stay tuned. Coming up next.